Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. You know, you often see people like me on YouTube processing stunning images. And I thought, well, what if we process a mediocre image? I'll show you my workflow and how I do my best to make a very average looking photo look nice. In this video, we're going to be working in Lightroom and I'm going to use Denoise AI to remove noise and I'm going to use Sharpen AI to sharpen the image. Topaz Labs currently has a sale going on. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website. I also have a promo code that will save you another 15%. This is the mediocre image we're going to be working on. I actually took this uh, this morning. I was waiting for the coffee to brew. I was looking out my kitchen window and to the right of this bush is a bird feeder. And I was looking at the birds in the feeder and I noticed this house finch sitting there patiently waiting their turn to get into the bird feeder. So I grabbed my camera and I took a few shots and this is one of them. And you could see it was shot at relatively high ISO. This was done with Nikon Z7 II with a 500 millimeter lens that was um, adapted with the FTZ II adapter. Um, shooting through the window, it's a bit soft. Because of that high ISO, I do have a considerable amount of noise and that's where the Topaz Labs products will come in. Now it's an unprocessed raw file. So I usually start out my processing with Lightroom and what I'll do here is I'm just going to do the typical thing most of us do, bring down the highlights a little bit, try to tease out a little more detail in these brightest areas, open up the shadows, make it kind of real flat looking. Then we'll bring back some of the contrast with the whites and black slider. I like to hold in the option key on my Mac, it's all key on a PC and click on the white slider. And then I'll get the white point by moving this to the right until I see some colors coming through. And then I'm starting to clip those channels. So I'll just back it off a little bit until all of that just disappears. And that's my white point. Similarly for the blacks, I'll hold in that option key on my Mac, Alt key on PC, and click in this time the, turn, the screen or the image turns white. And I'll move this to the left until I see some colors coming through. I'm starting to clip those channels as well. And I look at that and that might be a little bit too dark. So I'll just kind of tweak that to the right and just eyeball it. So that's my tone adjustments. Um, at this point, I don't do any texture clarity, dehaze, no vibrance, no saturation, because I want to work on the noise next. So what I'll do in Lightroom is I'll just adjust the tone and it will consist of usually the exposure slider if needed. I didn't need it today. I almost never move contrast and then I'll move the highlight shadows, whites and blacks. So mainly it's these four sliders. And then I'm done with tone. Zooming in, as I mentioned, there is quite a bit of noise. So what I want to do next is get rid of the noise. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down to the detail panel. Often when you import images into Lightroom, it will add a default amount of sharpening. As you can see, it added a default amount of 40. I take that down to zero. When you sharpen an image, uh, you're also enhancing noise if there is any significant noise. And it makes it more difficult to remove that noise. So I'll take sharpening all the way down. This just gives Denoise AI a better chance of effectively removing the noise. Also, I'll remove any uh, Lightroom luminance noise reduction because I'm using Denoise. I don't want to use Lightroom at all. Well, not quite at all because I will leave the default amount of color noise reduction. I found that Lightroom's color noise reduction is actually superior to just about everything I've ever seen even better than Denoise. Uh, Denoise by default really doesn't do anything for color. You have to manually move a slider and I'll show you when we're over there. Um, but I found that um, that Lightroom's color noise reduction is fine. So I'm ready now to send this image into Denoise. One thing I want to mention, you'll notice I didn't crop it at all. I don't think I'm going to crop this image, but uh, I found that all noise reduction applications, including Denoise AI, work best when they have the maximum amount of pixels to work with. So if I had cropped this first, 
then sent it to Denoise, it won't be as effective as sending the entire uncropped image to Denoise. So make sure you do that as well. Don't crop yet. Get rid of the noise first. So I'm going to send it to, to Denoise. I'm going to right click right on the image, go down to edit in, then over and down to Topaz Denoise AI. I'm going, because this is a raw file, I have to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. I'll leave these default settings and click edit. Now you see in the top left hand corner, there is a progress bar. Lightroom is creating this TIFF file with those specifications. Once Lightroom creates that TIFF file, it will automatically open it up into Denoise AI. As you can see, it is doing now. Now, by my, my preferred a way to use Denoise AI is in comparison view. These four panels are comparison view. In the top right hand side, you can see the different views. We have single view, split view, which is with this kind of line in the middle. We have side by side view with the original image with no noise reduction on the left and the image with noise reduction on the right. And then we have comparison view. The reason why I prefer to use comparison view is I could look at any four of the five AI models at one time and compare them to one another. Um, as you can see in the top left hand corner is the standard AI model. To the right of that is the clear AI model. Lower left is the low light AI model. And to the right of that is the severe noise AI model. So the only one is the raw AI model. And this isn't a raw file anymore. We, uh, because of a Lightroom limitation, Lightroom won't allow you to send a raw file from Lightroom into a plugin. You have to send either a TIFF, PSD, or JPEG. So that's why we have this TIFF file over here. So I don't even bother with that raw AI model unless I'm using Denoise AI as a standalone app and I import or uh, load a raw file directly into it. So one of these four, and you'll also notice as far as model preferences, there is an option to have it on auto. I like to have all four of these on auto because I feel it gives me a more apples to apples comparison. So I'll click through and just make sure that that slider is in fact on auto. Now there is an option in Denoise AI to get an automatic AI model, meaning Denoise will look at the image and determine which of the five AI models it thinks would work best. But you can't turn it on when you're in comparison view. You have to be in like single view then turn it on and it's saying it thinks the standard model is best. Now one thing you do have to wait for it to um, update in the lower left hand corner you can see it is updated so always make sure that is there and you can get a before after simply by just clicking on the image with the left mouse button. There's before letting go of the left mouse button is after. You also could click up here before after. Now again I prefer the comparison view over an automatic. Um, I trust myself and my eyes enough to know which one is best. Now, as I look at it, um, right in here, the like at first glance, the standard model looked best. But if I look right in here, these feathers look really odd. It looks like it's over sharpening it. The clear and the low light models aren't as good as that, even though that has that weird kind of sharpening of the feathers. But kind of a happy trade-off is severe noise. Severe noise appears to be better than clear and low light. It's not quite as sharp as standard, but it doesn't have that weird look at the feathers right in here. So that one looks pretty good. Now what I can do is I can come in and remove more noise or enhance sharpness, like for example, if I move sharpness all the way to 100 and let it render, um, it looks pretty sharp, but we have that kind of weird look in here again. So I don't want to do that. I'll just keep it on auto. Now I had mentioned that there is color noise reduction in Denoise AI, but it's not part of the automatic settings. It's down here in post processing right here. And you can see I have it at zero. Um, you also could try to recover original detail. If you find that when you're removing noise, it's making the image softer, you can move this slider to the right. I usually just keep that around 20. Um, so I don't use color noise reduction because I used it in Lightroom. So actually, make a long story short, too late. 
I'm just going to use the severe noise uh, model. It got rid of the noise fine. It gave me a bit of a sharper image, but it didn't over sharpen it. I'm going to use Sharpen AI for that. So we'll just click Apply. And because that was the active block, it had that little blue square in the middle, so it is applying that model to the image, the severe noise model uh, to the image. And you can see right here, it says severe right there. So once it's done, it will reopen back up in Lightroom. And it's right here, and it's that TIFF file. And if we go here, let's zoom in. And let's go up to View, and we're going to lock the zoom position. So when I click on the next one, it won't move to a different area. So there's the noisy image, and there's the noise-reduced image. Noisy image, noise-reduced image. All right, now, remember now, all I did really in Lightroom is I adjusted tone. Then I sent it into denoise, got rid of the noise. Well. What I'll do next is sharpen it. Um, I could come in and do some more adjustments that I want, but I, I'm going to send it to Sharpen AI at this point. So I'm going to right click right in the image, go down to Edit In, and then over and down to Topaz Sharpen AI. Now, this time, because it's not a RAW file, it's a TIFF file, I have all the options available. I could edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments, I could edit a copy, edit the original. Um, if you don't want an extra file on your um, hard drive and you didn't do any adjustments to it in Lightroom, like I didn't do any adjustments at all to this image. I could just edit the original and save drive space. But for comparison purposes, I'm going to choose one of the other two. I could edit a copy. I didn't do any adjustments. So that would be the same exact image as if I edited a copy with Lightroom adjustments because I didn't do any Lightroom adjustments. So either of those top two are fine. And we'll keep the default settings and click edit. And again, now Lightroom's going to create this third TIFF file. And it's, uh, see at the top left-hand corner, the progress bar. And when it does, it will open it up into Sharpen AI. Now, Sharpen AI has similar features to um, Denoise AI in that it has different models. And these are called Sharpen models. And you can see there's a lot of different models. Standard, then there's three different motion blurs, three different autofocus, three different too soft. Uh, modes. There's also, as far as standard is concerned, there's actually two different standard models. We have a lens blur model and a motion blur model. But again, I like to be in comparison view, and I like to look at all of them compared to one another. And if possible, I like to have it on auto. So I'll put this uh, on auto and let it render. You can see the blue box, so it's updated. Come over here, it is already on auto for motion blur, very blurry. Auto focus, very blurry is in the lower left, that is on auto, and too soft, very blurry is on the lower right. Now, as I look at them, the top two are over sharpened. They're like way too much. So I could kind of pick one of those if I really thought it was okay and like back off the remove blur or back off remove artifacts, but I'll just keep going through. And what I, I like is, is the other two uh, just look more natural. Um, out of focus, very blurry. Looks like the best, just eyeballing it. Now I could come in and try to remove more blur if I felt the need to. Move it to the right. And you could see how it like totally messed up the background and everything. So let's put that back on auto. Let it re-render. That looks all right. The background looks kind of funky. So what we could do is we could relegate the sharpening just to the subject, that is the bird, right? To do that, go to select and just turn it on. And what it will do is it will look for the subject in the image and it will find it. And you can see right here, found the bird. Whatever is white is being sharpened and whatever is black is not being sharpened. So it's not sharpening the out of focus background. We don't want it to. We want it to just sharpen the house finch and it did. And you could get a before after similar to the way we did in Denoise AI by clicking with the left mouse button. There's before and there's after. You gotta let it re render. Now, if I wanna see it uh, larger, I could then just make sure this is the active one with the blue box in the lower left hand corner. That's the one I've decided I think is the best of the bunch. I'll go to single view mode. You have to wait for it to render. And because there's more pixels to sharpen now, it takes a little longer. So wait till that it says updated, and there it is. There's before, and there's after. Before, after. I think that looks pretty good. So we'll click apply. 
Now once we're back in Lightroom, I'll finish my processing in Lightroom. And I think I'm probably done. Now if I was going to crop it, and let's say I was going to crop it very tightly, uh, after I cropped it, I would use Gigapixel to increase the resolution of the image. I don't think I'm going to crop it, going to crop it, um, because I kind of like it the way it is. I like it. I don't need a close-up of the bird. I kind of like it um, kind of zoomed out a little bit. So there we go. So there is our sharpened image now. So let's go back to the original RAW file. Without any noise reduction done, all that was done to it was tone adjustments. There is our noise reduced image. And there is our sharpened image. In the sharpened image, what you may find, it won't look like it's sharpened. Um, this is a bug in Lightroom. And hopefully they fix this bug soon. And I actually reported this bug uh, to them. You can see how it, it's, for a minute it looks like it's going to sharp, and then it goes off like that. What you need to do is close down Lightroom. I'm going to close it down, and you'll see, I believe, we'll get an error message. It didn't give me the error message. But then reopen Lightroom. There's the error message. Click OK. Now reopen Lightroom. Now you'll see, once it opens, that we have the sharpened image. Okay, we're going to go up to view, back up to view, and we're going to lock the zoom position. We have to do that every time. And there is our sharpened image. Let's reposition it. So there is, the, here, let's start at the beginning. All right, make it. There is the raw file with all the noise. There is the noise reduced image. There is the sharpened image. You can see we didn't overly sharpen it, and we just sharpened the bird. We didn't sh try to sharpen the out of focus areas in the back. Looks pretty good. So now I'm going to finish my processing. So what I'll do is um, I like to zoom in when I'm adding uh, clarity. Just add a little bit of clarity. I don't think I want to add too much texture. That's going to make it look funky. So I'm not going to do that. Zoom back out. We'll add a tiny bit of saturation. It is pretty colorful the way it is. We don't want to make it like ridiculous. Just a little bit. Like that. And I think I'm pretty done, much done. I'm just going to go to effects and I'm going to put a little dark vignette on it just to try to burn the corners a little bit. Edges make everyone kind of look more towards the middle. And that's it. I'm done. So there is how I go about processing, quote, a mediocre image in Lightroom with, along with using Denoise AI and Sharpen AI. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>